We'll see the liftoff, and if we told you before, there's almost nine seconds, 8.9 seconds before the, uh, the Saturn actually lifts off of the pad after ignition. You will then see it start a roll program in about 11 seconds. It begins to turn slightly, and you'll see the big black and white markings and the red lettering on the Saturn begin to turn a little bit as that roll begins. That's to get it right into the right azimuth. And then uh, at uh, 17, 1 minute and 17 seconds, it goes through the maximum dynamic pressures on the, on the launch uh, phase. Now let's listen to mission control. Mission control at 5 minutes, 30 seconds, and our count is still go at this time. We've just completed further status checks here in the firing room at the control center. Here in the control center, we've had our status checks, and uh, the range has given a go, as, as has the uh, launch director, Rocco Patron. We are still counting, and we are go coming up on the five-minute mark in the count. Mark, T minus five minutes and counting, T minus five. At this point, the Apollo access arm should be coming back, and it is now moving back at the 320-foot level to its fully retracted position high atop the tower at pad A. Our countdown still proceeding at this time at the four-minute mark in the countdown. The overall count will be turned over to the launch vehicle test conductor. Ray Roberts, the launch vehicle test conductor, will conduct the final four minutes as all... Uh, different aspects uh, move over to the launch vehicle test conductor's channel. The uh, automatic sequence, as reported, will come in at the three minute and six second mark in the countdown. We're standing by at four minutes, 16 seconds and counting. This is launch control. As we were telling you, at, at one minute and 17 seconds into the flight, that's when you see the great contrail begin as uh, the as the spacecraft uh, begins to emerge from the deep atmosphere of Earth. And it's called an area of maximum dynamic pressure, too, uh, when the maximum buffeting takes place and uh, when the stresses and strains on this big 363 feet of vehicle uh, are the most intense. Uh, at that point, uh, the big engines, uh, the five engines of the uh, of the First stage, you're gulping 3,000 gallons of fuel a second. Here's Jack King again. 30 seconds and counting. We have completed our communications checks with the Apollo 8 astronauts in the cabin, and the communications are go. Coming up shortly, we'll uh, be in the automatic sequence where we have a completely automatic uh, checkout of the launch vehicle from uh, three minutes and six seconds down. We have firing command. The firing command is in. We are now on the automatic sequence, T minus three minutes and counting. During this period, once we do get the firing command, the various tanks within the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle begin to pressurize. pressurize. They all must be under pressure before we're ready to launch. We have a sequence status board here in the control room that will give us readouts on the overall status of the space vehicle as we reach the terminal phases in the countdown. Now, two, two minutes, 32 seconds, and counting. Our status board indicates that all aspects are ready. Instrument unit is ready, spacecraft ready. Final check of the emergency detection system. That ready light also on. First stage preparations are completed. Two minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The tanks continuing to pressurize in the vehicle. Not as many reports coming now as we all stand by on the launch vehicle test conductor's channel. Coming up on the two minute mark on the Apollo 8 mission. Two minutes and counting. T minus two minutes and counting. We are still proceeding. We now have uh, recorded that the uh, first stage uh, liquid oxygen tank has been pressurized and the pressure's still building up. One minute, 45 seconds and counting. We have a vehicle weighing 6.2 million pounds on the pad. Interestingly enough, some 1,200 pounds of that weight is just frost on the side of the vehicle created by the extremely low temperatures of the propellants. Coming up on 90 seconds, mark T minus 90 seconds and counting. The Apollo 8 uh, crew standing by, spacecraft commander Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, Bill Anders. We now have a report that the liquid hydrogen tank on the third stage is pressurized. One minute, 15 seconds. All third stage uh, 
propellants pressurized at this time as we come up on the 60-second mark on a flight to the moon. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. The vehicle now is completely pressurized. We're coming up on a power transfer shortly. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. We have the power transfer. We're now on the flight batteries within the launch vehicle. 45 seconds, final reports coming from Frank Borman at this time. Final uh, look at the switch list aboard the spacecraft. 35 seconds and counting. We'll lead up to an ignition sequence start at 8.9 seconds. This will lead up as we build up the thrust to a liftoff. If all goes well, at zero. We've just passed the 25 second mark in the count. 20 seconds, all aspects. We are still go at this time. T-minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are armed. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have commit. We have, we have lift off. Lift off at 7.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looks good. We have cleared the tower. Oh, and there's the rumble in our building. It looks good. It looks like a good flight. It's a beautiful takeoff so far. This building is shaking under us. Our camera platform is shaking. But what a beautiful flight. Man, perhaps on the way to the moon. If all continues to go well. Probably more severe than the men in the spacecraft itself. One minute and fifteen seconds, Dan. We're a little more than half a mile into the sky and about uh, nearly four miles downrange. You're now hearing the voice of Paul Haney at Mission Control in Houston. And our great VU cameras are picking up the spacecraft. One minute for 40 seconds. Yeah, All looks great. Now in 15 seconds, the inboard engine should cut off on that first stage. That's the one inboard engine and then six-tenths into the mission, and uh, Frank Borman has confer confirmed each event as it's been passed to him by Mike Collins at this point. The crew has been given a go for staging. Inboard, out, on time, Frank Borman says. In 25 the more seconds, engines. the other four engines of the first stage should cut out. Two the minutes, 25 seconds. Rocket then will be 20 miles high and going 3,000 miles an hour. And there is the we see, staging. Uh, an S1C, the first stage cut off. S2 has ignited, we can confirm. And the thrust looks good. All engines, all sources show the second stage is burning perfectly. Two they had their finger. They had their fingers crossed for that one. It was two of the engines that failed on the second stage in the and second. The, uh, three minutes into the flight, we're 50 miles high and about 10 miles downrange. Three minutes, 25 seconds. We have uh, we have verified that the tower has jettisoned. That's the crew has verified the tower has jettisoned. That's the launch escape tower, which if there had been a disastrous uh, explosion Frank before Norman this, would have pulled the spacecraft free. He says the ride now is even smoother. Okay. When the spacecraft, uh, when the uh, launch escape system jettisoned, it pulled away the cover, which had to 
cover the uh, command module to protect it from the 1200 degree heat of this uh, uh, escape Coming from the Earth. Four minutes into the flight and the communication thus far has been excellent. It's been a little sparse, but it's been quite sharp okay. and clear. They're now a good 500 miles downrange. And about 20 miles or more downrange. They should be making 5,400 miles now. 200 miles downrange. Yes, I think that's more, more likely. The next important event of the flight is the cutoff of the second stage engines. That comes eight minutes and 40 seconds into the flight, flight or about uh, three minutes, Charles four minutes from Wood now. Charles gets an enthusiastic go from both trajectory and booster at four minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. <laughs> 